So the way we were going to open the show before Justin Herbert did that, before we got a wild Sunday night game, was with the Chiefs really taking it to the Cowboys at Arrowhead. Yeah. A version of this game that you and I certainly didn't see coming. I mean, we yeah. thought there were going to be a ton of points in this game. We thought there were going to be just a back and forth offensive matchup. And that's not what happened at all. I mean, it was a really, really tough day for the yeah. Cowboys offense in a way that I just didn't see coming at all. It, it was just disjointed. And you could, even the stuff that they tried, you could see where the injuries came into effect a little bit, not only just offensive line wise, but just uh, with the receivers, especially of course. And, and as the game went on after CD got concussion, but like right off the bat, they tried to go tempo on third down. And it was like, you know, Terrence Steele like just couldn't get out. he he I get what Terrence Steele's doing he's about to get set and they're just going so quick and they're trying to go from there but it was like that kind of expounded like that was kind of like just a little sampling of like the problems they had all day I I made the joke I've been tweeting it a couple times some freaking stupid Simpsons joke about the itchy and scratchy and poochy episode where they go they're going to the fireworks factory. I forgot in that episode, they never make it to the fireworks factory and neither did we. Like, we. I didn't get to see the fireworks factory. I was so excited. That first Chiefs drive, I'm like, here we go, baby. Like, yeah, often now the Cowboys are going to come back. And it was, no, it just wasn't that. After that first Chiefs drive, it was just, it was ugly. I mean, that's the only way to put it. It was a couple of flashes each side, but it was, it was pretty ugly on both ends. The Cowboys, just the version of their offense that they looked like was so almost unrecognizable. And obviously yeah. the, the receiver injuries are a thing, right? I mean, yes. not having Amari Cooper in this game is huge. And then not having CD lamb for a huge chunk of it. I mean, there were a couple contested balls and also just against the blitz. I mean, yep. the rapport that Dak has with Amari Cooper and the trust, you have to be willing to let those balls go. And I think yes. that was, that played a factor in it. But I mean, the biggest thing today was that the Cowboys just could not push the ball down the field. I looked this up. Dak, on throws of 10 plus air yards today, four of 17 for 58 yards. Oh, the man. only two quarterbacks in the league with a worse EPA per oh, dropback on those throws in this, this week were Matt Ryan oh, in man. that absolutely disgusting oh, Thursday night Thursday performance. Night One of the worst offensive performances Ugly. you will ever see. Unwatchable Ugly. football. I mean, yeah. you talk about a team depleted of their receivers. The fact that Cordero Patterson was a necessary piece of this and you remove him and Calvin Ridley and it's Zacchaeus and Tajay Sharp yeah. playing against that Patriots offense, understandable. The only other one, Tim Boyle. So oh, no. that's, that's, the, that's the company that Dak was hanging out in today. And I just oh. thought, I, obviously concerning from the Cowboys offense, you never want to see something like that when you're supposed to be a Super Bowl contender. We called them the yep. most interesting offense in the league. On last week's show, and I truly yep. believe that. I mean, they were leading the league in EPA per dropback. They were leading the league in scoring. It's not as if we were heaping all of this praise onto a unit that didn't deserve it. It wasn't so, a hipster pick. It was yeah, a yeah, it's exactly <laughs> so, so mainstream as it gets. <laughs> I want to give a lot of credit to the Chiefs defense because they were impressive to me on a couple different levels. What jumped out to you today about the way that Spags approached Dak and this offense? They were a page ahead the entire game. Yeah. First, first, Cowboys love being in two by two. They they like uh, Dak likes having it even. He can read the coverage and see what's see what's uneven about the defensive front, so he can make his points. Spags was bringing blitzes that actually are impossible to block from a two by two six man protection, like actually unblockable. You, How is it different is, blocking from a two by two versus a three by one? It's just the number count. It, 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 one side gets overloaded how they gotcha. can bring it. So if you bring like a saw pressure, one side turns into four guys and one side turns into two guys, just how you move the guys over. So the saw kind of like a, is that both linebackers blitzing the Sam and yes. the will. Sam and a will. And, and that's just a uh, X is on the chalkboard. So it could be a strong safety and a will, et yeah, cetera, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But two guys off the edge. And they got him a couple times. And it was like they the, what they made him do was you usually want to get to either seven man protection or you want to spread them out. So the Cowboys were like, hey, we're not picking this stuff up, but spread them out, go to empty. Hence all the short throws. Cowboys aren't a go ball team. They're not. And no. how many times did you see Dak throwing a go ball today? That is a that's a one on one. Yes, it's an advantage throw, quote unquote, but it's not the one you want. We say it's a 50 50 ball. It's more like 30 70. And that's they don't have those kind of receivers. Nope. Like that, even especially that with Amari. I mean, Amari's not that kind of guy anyway, but when you're depleted of your good receivers, you really don't have those types of receivers. Throwing yes. 50 50 balls to Cedric Wilson is not where you want to be. That's not what you want. Not what you and want. And I thought, at all. you know, there was some pressure, but there wasn't a ton. It's not mm -hmm. like they were living in it, they were doing it just enough to keep them off balance. And I thought that that was a hugely impressive aspect yeah. to the way that the Chiefs play today. 
no idea what's coming. Whether it's bringing Very heat lovely. and then having him be uneasy because of that, or when they're bringing four, Chris Jones just destroying people. <laughs> the whole and game. that, so that, we'll talk about that in a second. But the other aspect of just the Chiefs' performance tonight specifically that I wanted to hit on, the tackling was incredible. Yes. Incredible. There was yes. a, a two play stretch at one point. I think it was late in the first half where they tried to run two screens on back to back plays. And when you can't block, it makes a lot of sense in defined passing situations to run some screens if you think they're going to bring heat. One on one tackles in space. Legere Sneed made an incredible play on what should have been a really nice gain. It was third and five on a screen to Sneed, a screen to Lamb. Mm-hmm. And then there was another play. I want to say it was Sneed again who made a play on Zeke. On, it was yep. a, another screenplay, and it, mm-hmm. they they did that consistently. The yep. amount of plays they just snuffed out in open space was really really impressive. When you're playing a pressure heavy look, you need to that's what you need to do. You need yep. to tackle on the back end. When you're playing coverage, you need to dominate up front. Yep. And Chris Jones did that tonight. He yes. did against everybody, whether it was Connor Williams, whether it, or Connor McGovern, whether it was. Zach Martin, it didn't seem to matter. He dominated the game. And now I think it brings us to a conversation about the pieces falling into place for the Chiefs. He is, to me, the perfect example. You slide him back inside, piece falls into place. Frank Clark playing better on one side. Melvin Ingram is now in the mix. Your secondary is playing better. Everything is starting to coalesce. They're 10th in EPA per play on defense over the last four weeks. People screwed up. Like team, the, the the rest of the NFL fucked up. Yep. You needed to put these guys away while you had a chance. And the AFC was just not set up to do that this year. So now you have a team playing fine defense. They're, they're fine combined with Patrick Mahomes on the other side. And in a muddled AFC where there is no defined great team, now you have this Chiefs team just kind of sitting there leading their division and acting as a terrifying prospect for everyone else in the conference. Yeah. I mean, there no one wants to play them. Uh, no. You you pray against that offense. Like the cow, how the Cowboys played today on defense was the best you could hope for. Really? Yeah. I mean, that if for the rest of the way, like if a team was going to play against this team, it's like that is the best you can hope for, but it's like man, this offense and especially, you know, CEH was back there and you could just see just just getting fresh legs. Is however whatever you think about CEH, it's their running backs at least getting two guys that can do this stuff helps it just helps you just it's more bodies that you can stay fresh throughout not only just a game just a season so it's not like you're just relying like oh man williams is down holy crap we gotta like who we run at jerk mckinnon okay all right mckinnon all right please protect for us you know like but just getting another talented guy and they don't have even last year like the defense they had their moments every year i feel like we talk about the chiefs the exact same way first four weeks oh my god defense oh my god what are they going to do oh my god have they screwed up they spent too much money and then all of a sudden we just get here to week 11 week 12 and we're like oh yeah they're spags just gets really good as he realizes what his personnel is as the yeah. season goes along and their offense is patrick Mahomes. and th- but this year the line is a step better a step and a half two steps better than it was last year and like yeah is it perfect no but it's better and it's good and actually can they held their own against a pretty talented Cowboys front, even with a couple of injuries they have. I mean, they they can get after guys. I mean, Parsons Parsons had his fun um, a couple of times, but you know that's going to happen. Uh, but just this this Chiefs team, man. I mean, just I I want to talk about the other thing too. Was like was staying a page ahead, like Spags too. Is like they started going two man, and they go two man, and the Cowboys were waiting for pressure, so they're getting an empty. They're going against two man. Dex like I'm not scrambling. And they would have no outbreakers. They would just be running like four verts or something. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not good against two man. The the first time they ran sale, which is probably my favorite two man play, so it's why I recognize it was the two minute drive at the end of the game to Dalton Schultz, and that's because that's an outbreaker against inside leverage. And the fact that they stayed ahead of a team that's been really just dictating stuff. Like the Cowboys offense, even with the injuries they have, they're no joke. Like they they can mess you up with personnels and formations and just running the ball. And like you said, they are tackling their asses off. And that's that's stuff that you want to see. That's not a luck-based thing. It wasn't like three tip balls led to interceptions. And it's like, oh, well, you know, they had that kind of havoc defense that created for the offense. It was like a consistent down-after-down performance from this defense. And it was a great, great job. 100%. It was hard every single play. It was, yes. Nothing came easy to the Cowboys yes. today. And now you're looking at an AFC where the Bills are really struggling. I mean, their offense looks very disjointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the defense will get to it today. I mean, they got run over. The Titans' offense 
has no idea where it is. Yeah. And I don't know how that's going to get better with Derrick Henry not coming back with AJ Brown now banged up. They seem to have lost their identity. The Patriots are cruising, but other than that, I mean, it's it's so wide open that mm-hmm. leaving the door open for these this Chiefs team, I think that we're going to have some regrets. Some teams are going to sit there and be like, "This we had our shot, and yep. we did not step into that opening, and now the Chiefs are just here." And yep. the Patriots and the Chiefs look like the best teams in the AFC. And I just a month ago that seemed pretty far off. Yeah, we I, we've called Michael uh, uh, Michael we called uh, Patrick Mahomes Michael Myers before, and I mean I think that's more like the Chiefs team. They're just going to keep coming after you. And then it's just like, no matter, like whatever the game, how it breaks, if it's ugly and windy and they miss field goals, how many missed field goals were there today in the entire NFL, by the way, it's like 20 doinks. I think I, I saw today. <laughs> it was, I mean, seriously, but it, uh, but I mean, honestly, they just, they're relentless and it's scary that the defense can play like this. That's yes. what I think it is. It's not, a, this was not a, this was a process based win as opposed the fact to that they just, can win like this. And yeah. this isn't Jordan love. It's not squeezing yes, out an ugly win it. against Jordan Love. It's squeezing out an ugly win against one of the best offenses in the league. Banged yep. up, yes, but not banged up enough to explain away or hand wave this performance from the Chiefs. Dak wasn't out. Dak yes. wasn't out. So that's that's really it. I know they're banged up, but Dak wasn't out. Here we go again. <laughs> with the, with the, the same old teams here going to be sticking around till the end. <laughs> 